Hi everyone. So, Better Late Than Never, uh, here is an abridged version of an introduction to Brazilian film culture and the film Bacurau that I was due to give for the Hyde Park Picture House last Sunday, uh, for obvious reasons, can no longer do that. So here we are um, experiencing social distancing in Adeline Leeds instead. A uh, quick word of thanks to Ollie, Wendy and everyone at the Hyde Park Picture House for the opportunity to do this. And thanks to Anna, who stuck at home with me, God help her, and has kindly offered to film and edit this piece. My starting point was to be an overview of contemporary Brazilian film culture. I recently published a book on this very topic, happen to have a copy here, Remapping Brazilian Film Culture in the 21st Century, in which I trace the developments in film culture from roughly 2003 and, and the arrival of the PT, or the Workers' Party um, in government, to 2018, and the run-up to the election of Jair Bolsonaro to the presidency. And there is, or at least there was, plenty to celebrate in this remapped film culture. Brazil's film industry is the 10th largest in the world. Brazil's films are capable of drawing cinema audiences of over 10 million. And financial incentives have resulted in an increase in production and a growth of new film exhibition spaces. And a targeted use of funding has resulted in a gradual but still significant growth in the number of women and non-white filmmakers, for example, and a greater representation of traditionally underrepresented groups on screen, such as Brazil's LGBTQ communities. These shifts in the filmic landscape came hand in hand with a range of initiatives introduced by or further developed by the Workers' Party government. So we're talking 2003 to 2016, such as an increased representation of black and working class Brazilians on university programmes and other initiatives aimed to promote diversity and a politics of inclusion. These shifts can be witnessed in film productions coming through over the last 10 years or so. We've lots of first time directors making it to the film festival circuit in Brazil and beyond. And these directors aren't just from Rio and Sao Paulo. Cleber Mendonça Filho and Juliano Dornelis, the directors of Bacurau, are both from Recife in the northeast of the country and made their first feature film with Kleber directing and Juliano as production designer in 2012, the critically acclaimed Neighbouring Sounds. And Bacurau makes the point of challenging so many cliched beliefs about the northeast of Brazil by showing a population that is technologically aware, racially diverse, democratic, women led and LGBTQ friendly. In my book, among other things, I examine where cinema sits in the cultural and socio-political landscape, but without inflating its importance. The fact is that television still dominates in Brazil when it comes to audiovisual culture, like it does in the UK. For all the great initiatives put in place by the Workers' Party to democratise access to the world of film, both in front of and behind the cameras, a large part of the Brazilian population does not have access to a cinema. So a film like Bacurau, despite its remarkable success at the box office, has been seen that by less than 1% of the Brazilian population. Yet, as Janet Harbord argues, there are many different ways that film enters our lives. And films, even when they haven't been seen in cinemas, play a really big role in fostering a whole range of important current debates. And here I'm not just talking about current debates around funding of the arts, censorship and so on. How and when film influences society is one of the features that makes film cultures unique. And Clement also Filho's work is a great contemporary example of this. Through his filmmaking, Kleber has intervened in debates on the environment, nepotism, patronage, class prejudice, and other outmoded social practices, and of course, the parliamentary coup that led to the impeachment of Dilma Rousseffi and the current cacistocratic government. And as I explore in the book, his critique of the government post-2016 has come at a significant personal cost. Anyway, the point is, in relation to film culture in Brazil, if Ken Loach is as close as we in the UK have to a politically engaged filmmaker who is a household name, then Brazil has at least 10 Ken Loaches. The film industry in Brazil took a massive hit in 2016 with the post-impeachment austerity government led by Vice President Michel Temer and then Bolsonaro. 
Both have practiced a politics of reversal of the diversity and inclusion initiatives developed by the Workers' Party, including investment in the arts. The old patrons of film culture, such as the banks and Petrobras, the much maligned state oil company, are no longer investing in film projects. The film industry, as a result of withdrawal of investments and the beginnings of a worrying trend of censorship, is on its knees. And if you've been following the news in Brazil, you'll know that the government has been widely criticised for its handling of the COVID-19 threat. Bolsonaro seems hell-bent on not taking the threat it poses seriously. So, the huge problems facing the film production, exhibition and distribution sectors will only be exacerbated by the current situation. And while it not, might seem great that we're getting the opportunity to see so many cool films on online platforms, the truth is that jobs in the sector in Brazil, like over here, have already been lost. All the more reason to get back out when we can and support our local cinemas. So it's an interesting time to be talking about Bacurau, a film first developed back in 2010 or so and set in a remote part of the interior of Brazil in a near future that depicts a community in a state of siege, having to deal with a tin pot leader practicing necro politics and on top of that, a strange force from outside threatening the welfare of the people. Uh, Brazil confronting the coronavirus is, of course, only one in a long list of possible metaphors that can be read into the film, which, like the link between Bacurau and Bolsonaro that critics, particularly outside of Brazil, insist on, could not have influenced the writer-directors of Bacurau when they first started work on it years ago, but which do seem to fit very neatly. My own favourite metaphorical reading of Bacurau is of the fictional town depicted in the film as a microcosm of an idealised northeastern community that demonstrates all of the cherished values promoted by successive PT governments while constantly struggling with threats from outside in the guise of an exploitative and destructive foreign investment scheme, so that's the foreign tourists in the film, and which relies on the collusion of southern white middle class Brazilians the two bikers. And that is this, as close to a spoiler as you're going to get in this introduction, by the way. Uh, we need to take care, of course, not to essentialise Brazilian and other developing country cinemas as allegorical by necessity, because apart from anything else, when we do this, we forget to appreciate films on other levels. Bacurau is, first and foremost, a thrilling film to watch, unique in its mashing up of genres, and an homage both to the films that influenced the directors, so the films of John Carpenter, Steven Spielberg, Western starring Clint Eastwood and so on, and to Brazil's own rich cultural heritage. Uh, the cinema Nova film movement of the 1960s and the neorealist fiction of the 20s and 30s, as well as more popular northeastern traditions, Afro-Brazilian social and religious practices, and many more besides. Uh, if you want to know about the influences on the film, check out Mapping Bacurau, the series at New York's Lincoln Centre that was especially curated by the directors and sadly cut short due to the coronavirus. As you probably know, Bacurau won the Critics' Choice Prize at Cannes last year and has enjoyed critical and commercial success wherever it's been released. In a year when the Cannes Palm d'Or uh, winner, The Foreign Language Parasite, has gone on to win the Best Picture uh, Award at the Oscars, analogies between the two films have perhaps in inevitably been drawn. It is perhaps worth it bearing in mind when drawing such analogies that Clever Mendonça Filho, back in 2012, made a film, Neighbouring Sounds, that I mentioned earlier, which amongst other things explores the contrasting experiences of city living and class conflict, which suddenly erupt into extreme violence. In this sense, I would argue that Baccarat is very much post-parasite film. I hope you enjoy it.